Joining us now is Oji Okpe with stories trending around the one action. The, the world. world. You know, we'll try wow. to treat more Nigerian stories today. How about okay. that? Good morning, Dr. Good, I Dr. Dr. Wawulensi. No, 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 no. I always come in peace. Says, the only thing is I didn't wear white today, but I come in peace uh, as always. You know that to fight. The day you don't wear white, <laughs> you want to give them a white wash. <laughs> this man, this man. How are you, Ayo, this Good. morning? <laughs> you know, it looks like a dove you're wearing, so that's enough peace. Oh, I love this no. woman. <laughs> well, I'm seeing your dove for Nigeria. Yes. Oh, yes, you got my no green head. No green it, head. No it green. will last just a few more days, just so you guys know. I, 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 I just wanted to do the no green for a moment. But how about that? We love it. Well, all right. Well, let's begin what's trending. On Tuesday, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu extolled his predecessor, Muhammad Buhari, during the unveiling ceremony of two books titled Working with Buhari and Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, saying that he served Nigeria with dedication and uncommon zeal. Tinubu also praised the authors of the book, one of which was written by Buhari's former special advisor, Femi Adeshina, saying that they have done justice to the essential of Muhammadu Buhari, especially on his tenure and legacy as the 15th president of Nigeria. You have seen office at a very difficult time in our nation. Slide. The economy was sprang into recession, Boko Haram has taken over so many local governments and some part of our country. It is easy to forget that United Nations building was attacked here in Abuja. It's easy to forget the role of armed forces. But if this book is carefully read and taught in terms of substance in our various schools, the job of securing the in every inch of our nation may not be completed, but you did a wonderful job. Well, Tinubu there saying Buhari did a wonderful job. Well, in the meantime, the former president, while speaking at his first public appearance since leaving office, expressed deep gratitude to those who supported him during his presidency, including President Tinubu. Buhari also highlighted the challenges faced by his administration and apologized for the tough decisions taken during his tenure, while affirming his unwavering belief in the nation's future. In our journey to the desired destination, there will be hard decisions taken, and the people would bear some costs. We can only seek their understanding and state that there was no intention to deliberately inflict pain and anguish on anyone. This is why I apologize to such people at the end of our time in office. Sacrifices are still being made now and will continue to be part of our national life and development. All right, Rufai, we're seeing former president uh, there apologizing for some tough decisions that he made. You know, last night I watched his uh, uh, former advisor, Femi Adeshina, on Newsnight, and he talked about how the president did a wonderful job. But if you recall, at the time, President Buhari had put in so many different policies that caused a lot of hardship in our nation, including, you know, importation, banning, uh, you know, imported goods, which affected some sectors as well. But also, we had uh, President Tinubu here saying that, you know, Buhari did a wonderful job. In the meantime, we are hearing that he inherited a bankrupt economy. There is an American band. I'm a lover of rock music and pop music. There's an American band called One Republic that sang a song. And the song goes thus, it's too late to apologize. It's too, it's too late. late. Too yeah, it's too late to apologize. Really? Uh, it's too late. You're not accepting the apology, Rufai. No. 
Really? No. Okay. Tell us why. And I'll tell you why. President Buhari came in 2015 with a lot of with a lot of expectations. In 2015, if you shouted "Say Baba," it was like a tribe, like a cult. Everybody loved that man. I loved him to bits and pieces. Everybody thought he was going to change things. But what did he do? He disappointed Nigeria. It took him six months before he gave us ministers. He took the state of growth the government of the PDP had then, and he truncated it. The value of the Naira then, they were saying they were going to bring from one dollar to one Naira, was about 200 now. They pushed it to about over 400 and something. Now it's gone over 1,000. The APC administration, over going to, after eight years now, has been one that has really dampened the courage of Nigerians in their country. When Buhari came in, he came in with the mantra that he was a general, he was going to fight insecurity and all of that. But insecurity increased. We had banditry and everything under him. He made some successes, don't get me wrong. Mm. He did a lot of projects, but there were many corruption allegations also in his administration. And people are checking what is even the cost of the project. He said he did. He took this economy, shut it down on his feet. He shut our borders in the process of trying to get right people to buy more Nigerian rice and all of that. Yes, yeah, some local production happened, but what happened? Inflation came. Many a hazard economy. At some point, he kept on blaming the fact that we're not getting enough forex. When the Ukraine war started, that we had a lot more money, what happened? Nothing. He printed 27 trillion in ways and means, and he kept on printing money that we cannot justify. He put our economy in this quagmire we are in today. And a lot of Nigerians feel the pain for it. Today, a, thousand, a, a dollar is over a thousand naira. A pound sterling is going to 1,600 or 700 naira. He left an economy in shambles. President Tinubu keeps complaining about it. Yes. His problem is so much that President Tinubu can't even take the fall for him. He has to say every time that it is you that caused the corruption. Yes. Under his administration, he set up a humanitarian ministry that has become a cesspit for corruption today. Right. A minister under his administration is now going to the EFCC to give account. After all of this, you're saying tough decisions. President Buhari, you didn't think through those decisions when you made them. And that's why I say this morning, it's too late to apologize because the damage has been done. Mm. The Nigeria where we knew in 2015 that had a vibrant economy that was an investor's hub for Africa is no longer the Nigeria we know today. Right. And you started the process of the damage you take accountability and responsibility. But as children of God, we'll take your apology, but it's too <laughs> late to apologize. Okay. I assure you, yes. it's too late. Well, Rafai has uh, taken his apology, but you know, uh, still saying it's too late. You made mention of the insecurity. Yes. And obviously, President Tinubu also inherited that insecurity. But you saw him there, you know, praising Buhari, saying at the time he took over the government, there was, you know, all the bombings in Abuja and terrorism reduced a lot. Well, in another development, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has condemned the recent spate of kidnappings and bandit attacks, describing the development as disturbing, ungodly, and sinister. The president made the comment when he received a delegation of Jimiatu Asaruddin, a highly respected Islamic movement at the State House in Abuja on Tuesday. President Tinubu said while security agencies are acting with dispatch to immediately address the current challenge, all required resources, policies, and plans will be rolled out soon for massive education of Nigerian youth. The president said education is the antidote to the troubles ailing the nation, adding that there is no weapon against poverty that is potent as learning. I think that this was a very, you know, valid point President Tinubu has made. Education, we need to see how this will be implemented. Though even during the book launch, he also talked about the fact that, you know, history was taken out of our, you know, curriculum. He would like to have, you know, these books written for uh, President uh, Buhari uh, included in our curriculum. While in the same vein, the Supreme Council of Sharia in Nigeria on Tuesday provoked a fresh controversy on the Muslim Muslim ticket of the All Progressives Congress for the 2023 election, which is said has fallen short of expectation. The president of the Sharia group gave the verdict. In an interview with journalists during a national conference held in Abuja, he said despite the enormous support received by the president during the election, Nigerians have not enjoyed dividends of democracy. The president went further to state that the group campaigned and supported Tinubu until he came into power, but that now they are suffering.
Ayo, before I come to you, I mean, you see these groups now saying that they supported Tinubu and they are suffering. But you know, education is one way of solving the insecurity. Absolutely. But also, you know, earlier we took the story of the Lagos Trust Fund, which will bring me to my next story, about state governors doing what they need to do to ensure security in their various states. Well, in the meantime, the governor of Kaduna State, Uba Sani, announced plans to establish a security trust fund to confront all emerging and reoccurring security challenges in the state. The governor spoke on Tuesday at the Kaduna Core Security Council meeting with traditional rulers and local government chairmen of frontline areas. The Kaduna State Government is looking at the possibility of establishing the Kaduna State Security Trust Fund as a means of collaborating with corporate organizations, the business community, industrialists, professional groups, individuals, and all critical stakeholders toward enhancing material and logistic support to our security forces. A great way to tackle insecurity. Kudos to the Kaduna State Governor. Remember when we took the story for Lagos State, we encourage yes. other states to emulate or to adopt the same measures as the Lagos Trust Fund, one way to tackle insecurity. I also believe Uba Sani has been really good in even just, you know, having yes. vigilantes. He empowered about 7,000 young people to try to help them, you know, curb yeah. the uh, menace in Kaduna State. Yeah, I think uh, this um, um, Governor Uba Sani has shown or demonstrated his seriousness to tackle what had um, beleaguered the past administration in terms of bringing Southern and Northern Kaduna together and tackling incessant attacks, especially in the Southern part of Kaduna. Through soft measures and you know hard measures or more obvious measures, I will never forget where we spoke about him going, attending a Christmas carol um, service in one of the churches in the southern part of Kaduna, just to show by his body language that he meant business. And as the first citizen of the state, he was interested in leading the people to live together more peacefully. Very powerful message message there. So he's been doing the right things in terms of his commitment to promoting security in Kaduna State. And I must say that it is important because last administration was terrible with security in Kaduna State. It was one news after the other, or whether abductions, attacks on one community or the other, with just little or nothing seen to address that. So I must give him kudos for that. Also, this is a great call um, that we made with regards to other states um, following or towing the line of the Lagos State Security um, Trust Fund, which Mr. Femi Otedola had donated $1 billion to the other time. So I'm hoping that the Kaduna citizens will also donate money to yes. this security trust fund. It's one thing to establish it. It's another thing for it to thrive because people, private citizens or corporate organizations buy into that idea. It's worked in Lagos State, other states should emulate. Now, let me go back to the story with regards to President Tinubu talking about education. When the um, Muslim group came to see him or went to see him, you know, showing concern for the security situation in Nigeria, and he spoke very well. We've talked about it a number of times. Analysts have said it's the remote and immediate causes of security or the rise in terrorism, banditry, kidnapping. Poverty has been highlighted as one of its. The former Vice President Atiku Abubakar said this following the kidnapping situations in Abuja. Uh, education, lack of it, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. It's not surprising that the place or the area that's most plagued with insecurity has the largest number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. And guess what? The insecurity situation further exacerbates the situation because if you can't protect students in schools, then parents are not encouraged to send the children to school anyway. But he said something very important, and I totally agree with that, that they must teach, whether through the Islamic way or through formal education, the people and people of their faith, that kidnapping is not in the, is not in the Quran. Mm -hmm. um, killing people or shedding of blood is not the way of the prophet. You know, it's not, they, they must teach the truth because some people twist religion on either side of the divide. Whichever religious belief you have can be twisted to the very extreme. So I like that he's drawing them in as well to take responsibility right. when it comes to education, both religious education and formal education as an antidote or one of the ant antidotes to, de you know, addressing um, insecurity. Now, going to the Sharia group who say that they are not happy. No, no, it doesn't have, it has not yet, there's no, no time yet. Is it's it just, too late to apologize? No, 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 it's eight months. No, no, they cannot. No, they should start. We've still seen some people, okay. even on social media, going up and saying, oh, we must. 
mean, you have your right to change your mind at any time, but it also shows and demonstrates that before you support or back something, yes. think through it. Absolutely. We're playing along religious sentiments and lines during election when it favored them. Now it's not favoring them anymore. It just shows that people are selfish. Yes. Everyone is looking out for their own interest. Now it's not favoring them anymore. They're not saying, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. No, it, can, it has to be based on ideological um, concepts or the fact that they thought it was great for the nation, right. not just for a particular group. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm I, just I like, love that. Well, all right. Shall we take another story? It's for you, Vimbai. Following up on the scandal that has rocked the humanitarian ministry, which led to the suspension of its minister, Dr. Beta Edu, the minister was said to have received the sum of 3 billion naira of COVID-19 funds for the verification of the National Social Register. Well, in a letter dated September 18th, 2023, Femi Bajabia the chief of staff to the president, told Beta Edu that her request to obtain the 3 billion naira from the COVID-19 funds had been approved by the president. The 3 billion naira was reportedly dispersed to nine companies, including one linked to Olubumi Tunjiojo, Minister of Interior. The approval letter from the chief of staff has now elicited more reactions. Vimbai, this letter, you know, is coming at the same time, you know, that panel has been set up to investigate the ministry. But, you know, um, the issue here is about that COVID-19 um, funds. I mean, back in 2020, the World Bank had issued $114 million to Nigeria. And also, even the central bank issued 100 million Naira credit. And, you know, we saw a lot of looting at the time. If you can pull up some of those videos where Nigerians were saying we are suffering, where is the money? But at the time, they also asked the accountant general of the federation to account for those funds. And now we are seeing that the 3 billion Naira, uh, yeah, that's the video, the 3 billion Naira was issued for verification of the social register. I mean, this is absurd at this point. Oh, gee, this is, it, this is devastating at the least because there's so many layers to the story, mm -hmm. so many layers to it. Like you rightfully said, it's 2023. Mm -hmm. You, our suffering is now, you know, induced by other factors. But in 2020, 2021, at the height of the impact that was caused to businesses, people, property, so the people suffered during 2020 because, I mean, COVID, it wasn't anything anybody could have planned for. And then to now discover that there's three billion that was hanging out somewhere yeah. in an account and is now available to redo because the social register had been done, it was but done. there was a choice to redo it is another, another question when there are more pressing matters on the ground. And then secondly, it is now part of the, these funds are now being transferred to a minister of interior who is not, no longer a director in the business, but we all know the complexities of the story. Uh, so now the question here is, what is going to happen to the minister of interior? Uh, because, we, you know, we, we've seen Better Edu, she's being investigated, kudos for that. We need to see this investigation expand mm -hmm. uh, to all who are, are named here so that they can also clear the names, yes. their names. They need to be given an opportunity to clear their names. Right. Uh, and, you know, to, to, to end off, uh, you know, in international relations, they always like to say there are no permanent friends, only permanent interests. Mm -hmm. I know Beta Edu's media aid is saying that this is all part of blackmail. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it just goes to show you that when the chips are down, like like Ayo was saying just now, it all comes down to personal interests. Yes. And it all comes down to people trying to save their necks and clear their names. Well, if that's what it's going to take to sanitize, uh, you know, corruption in right. various departments, then please Please leak. Let the leakage just yes, continue. Yes, we it, want to see absolutely. more documents leaking. More documents. Yes, it's <laughs> one leak memo after another. Quickly, uh, Olubumi Olu, 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 was supposed to be at CCB yesterday. He yes. couldn't make it because he has another engagement. They, I think they fixed another date for him. He should be there. Also, the chief of staff, Mr. Bajabi Amila, should be able to yes. make more explanation as regards this COVID-19. You see, these are part of the thing. When Buhari was saying we should forgive him, do you know most of these monies were printed? They were not monies we had. They were the money CBM printed. That's part of the things causing inflation in the country today. And you see the way they squandered it. Humanitarian ministry, all sorts of... Hard. You're talking about the Accountant General of the last administration. Was that not the man that was caught in a corruption scandal? 
over 100 billion. For the past eight years now, most accountant general has been caught in corruption. The one under good luck, Jonathan, too, was caught in corruption. No, we it's like a point in chalice. The so, we, so, so we keep having these things, and it goes on. We are printing money, they are squandering it. In about six months, and you can see the corruption allegation. And some people that were very begotted enough when we're calling, when we're talking about these things in this country, thought it was about religion. They pushed everything, Muslim. You can see, Nigeria's problem is not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about leaders having the heart to do well for the people. And the problem is, we don't have checks and balances in place that make the leader have the heart for the people. Yeah. You can see when Lagosians were protesting, no palliative for them to eat. Apparently, the humanitarian ministry is not answering questions. When Absolutely. we're saying, how would you give school feeding program during COVID-19 when schools were not open? Absolutely. They said our mouth was smelly. Yes. But whose mouth is smelly today? I mean, look at That's that. the kind of country we've built. And when we say it, somebody sits up there and say, I apolo apologize for what? <laughs> when people died because of this. People were robbed by one million boys during COVID-19 because of this. It's unfortunate. Three billion So naira please, the chief of staff fund. needs to explain. Yes. Accountant General yes. needs to explain all of them. The chief of staff needs to explain about this. Absolutely. In 2020, the federal government took a facility of $500 million to execute the National Social Register and cash transfers. We so we spent it. money then to do this social register. Now I spent another three billion hour to verify. Unfortunate. Just to let Nigeria, because that was a loan, for, so I'm not sure we've paid back the $500 million. And we're already spending more money to do in a, in a very, no, so, so we, we need to understand the scope of the problem and that every penny ought to be accounted for. Absolutely. $500 million, and 2020, what happened to that? All right, we shall take our final story then. The National Orientation Agency has issued a strict warning to the Olu of Owode Egba, Oba Aremo Showorimimo, for abusing Naira notes in a viral video. The monarch was seen spraying words of Naira notes on musician Wasiu Ainde Marshall, popularly known as Kwam Won, during the 13th anniversary of his ascension to the royal stool. The agency said the display was an abuse of the national currency, which attracts imprisonment fines or both. Well, let's take a look at that video before we come back for a discussion. By Ayo Rufai. I don't think I've ever seen um, that type of spraying before. Rufai, is this your monarch? I mean, I know no, you're from uh, no, no, Ogun no, no, State, no, but I mean, we have been talking thing. about this over and over again. It is against the law. This type of Naira plunking is unacceptable. I, um, I know you are from Zimbabwe. Sorry, do you guys do this in your country? <laughs> we're, do you know what? Funny enough, we're trying to emulate yeah, 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 yeah. Nigeria is Africa's giant. So somebody yes. in Zimbabwe right now is stringing together, stringing our, together. our worthless dollar. <laughs> well, all right. Well, let, let's hope that the monarch has heard and, you know, will desist from that type of practice. Well, I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.